G'day guys, we all know how cool it is to have an immersive mode into our video games, but keeping in mind every single object you put in your backpack, that may be a bit of a job. So that's why we're here today. Let's build an inventory system with UMGs. And here we are. Okay, so now what we want to do is create a new UMG, user interface, widget blueprint, UMG, sub, because I'm gonna just call it as a sub widget, and object button, or uh, let's do inventory object button. There we go. So what we can do is removing the canvas panel and we are gonna just add um, a button. I'm gonna call button object. I'm gonna add a border to this button. I'm gonna set the button as invisible, just uh, with uh, the alpha of the background color, so it would be clickable but not visible. I'm gonna expand the border to fill the the button, and as you can see, there is a, a bit of a padding which you can remove from here, but it's not enough because the button has a normal padding itself. So we go over boot button, we go over style. And here we have a normal padding. You can just set it to zero. And nothing will happen until you compile. Boom. There we go. So uh, this is actually enormous. It's uh, 1,280 for 720. And what we want to do is to make the fill screen, the, where there is a fill screen to desired. Because desired will actually show the real size of the object, which is super tiny. And so now what we're going to do is to uh, wrap the button into a size box. So right-click on button, wrap, size box. And we are just going to force the size of it. So width and height. And we do something like 150 or 150. So now we have a button which is a, for, of a, a certain size. And what we can do now is, I think we can just color these and, and see how it works. Maybe, no, okay, let's add the text into it. So I'm gonna color the border, brush color. Let's make it like bluish, like these, okay. I'm gonna center the text. And what we can do is, let's do that just name. What I wanted to do is to wrap the name here into um, scale box. There we go. So what is going to do this is going to just put a bit of padding. OK, uh, what is going to do the scale box if the name is getting longer, example, name, name, name is going to shrink it. So it will be always fitting the size we would define. OK, so we put it back name. And we are going to set the text box as a variable. OK, and let's just call it um, object name. And that's it. You, you can actually do whatever you want in this, because these will be the button which will be um, seen inside the inventory. There we go. So now, if we go over the UMG inventory, We will be able to find here on the, on the on the tab here under user created our UMG sub inventory object button, and we can add it to the border. Okay, I did a both. <laughs> Let's include a wrap wrap box inside our border. What we can do here is putting a bit of padding, so we'll be restricted a bit, and we go back where we was over. UMG sub inventory object button, and we can just drop it here. And just copy pasting. So, what we can see here is a, a mess of button all stick together. So, we can go over the red box and go over the inner slot padding and just put it to something like 30 and 30, or maybe even more. You can do no, 30, 30 should be fine. There we go. So now we have our our our, uh, our buttons here, and what you can do, you can keep them to uh, display and to understand what what's what is going on in your menu. But you need to remember if you want to keep it there, 
that on on Evan construct. So as soon as the widget is constructed, we want to get. Oh, sorry, I should expose Rubbox, Breadbox, inventory, and set it as a variable. So now we're going to find it here as a variable, and we can do clear children. So now, as soon as the, uh, we start, every children, this will be cleaned out. So I'm going to disable it just to show you. I'm going to hit play and press tab. As you can see, everything is already filled. So I'm going to connect it back, compile, and boom, everything is empty. There we go. So as a little recap, what do we have? We did. We have our character, which you can pick up objects. Every object, when it's picked up, what is going on is we are casting it to the pickup object. So we are getting the object data from the pickup object. And we are passing it to whichever widget has that interface with the function bi on inventory add object. And we are passing the object data. And then we are destroying the actor. So in our UMG inventory, what is going on is this event will be fired. And we're going to get the data of that object. So what we want to do now is something like uh, let's remove the print. We don't need it now. We can do create widget, which one? The sub inventory object. There we go. And we are going to get the red box inventory and add child. We connect it. I'm going to make a bit of order. There we go. So as a content, we are going to add our uh, inventory object button. So inventory object button as a child of the red box. So we are putting it inside it, OK? So we also need a way to pass our data inside our uh, our object in the inventory. So we move back to our inventory widget. And even here, what we do is create a new variable. We are going to do ST object data, object data. We are going to expose it and expose to spawn. So both instance editable and expose to spawn and compile. So now when we go back on inventory, we can refresh the node. And finally, we'll have our object data struck here. So we can just connect it like this and remove this. So now we need inside our uh, inventory. Once we get created, so as soon as the sub inventory object is created, so the event construct is getting fired. We get the object data we just got from the creation. And we can get the text block object name and do set text. There we go. We are going to break this struct, get the name. And we're going to edit like this. So what is going on? We are setting this variable, the uh, text inside this. So now we can see like this, we open the inventory, which is empty. And now we can go to pick up one sphere. And we will have the cool sphere here. We we'll close the inventory. And again, pick up, pick up. And all three cool spheres will be here. So what we can do in case we have uh, maybe a thumbnail or uh, we want an image to appear here and not just the cool sphere like this. So what we can do here is go over our uh, data struct which you already opened before. And we can add something like object thumbnail. And we're going to do something like texture 2D. There we go. So what we're going to do here is to, OK, I messed up something. Oh, there we go, sorry. OK, uh, what we're going to do here into the object data here, we have the select thumbnail. And we can do um, maybe show engine icon green. Then we can I'm just searching for random icons here. And maybe the target like this. Uh, one can be maybe sphere. The other one can be uh, box, cool box. And the third one can be uh, 
an explosive and do cool explosive. There we go, perfect. So now, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to pick up them, but nothing will be happening because no, the names are going to get uh, updated, but we didn't write anything to make sure that the thumbnails are actually added. So in order to do this, what we need to do is go over the um, sub button. There we go, this one. And we need to make sure that um, we can set the border image, okay? So we set it as a variable. Border thumbnail. And on event construct, since we are passing all this data we need, we can just do set brush from texture, which texture the object thumbnail. And there we go. So now we have our icons and uh, the text is over and it is updated. Uh, the last thing I want to do and to show you is make so that in the moment we are picking up our objects and we click on them, we are able to spawn them back in the world, like dropping the object we have in the inventory. So let's move on this. Uh, what I want to do as first is to make sure that um, just for a, a visual matter, what we can do here is just going and set the static mesh as root. So having just a static mesh here, and we can, uh, we want to simulate the physics, but to simulate the physics, we need to have some kind of object here. Then we can simulate physics, enabling it. And then I think we can even like remove it and see, and see here, we do play and they are dropping it down. Perfect like this. So, we can push them, we can pick them up. As you can see, they are in inventory, pushing, grabbing, grabbing, and they are here. Okay, what we want to do is make so that we click on them and they get spawned in the world. So to make so, what we need to do is go back to the sub inventory object. We go over the graph and we want to create a new dispatcher. The new dispatcher will need to have, uh, we can call it like uh, on, on object clicked, and it will have the object data. So we do object data. Let's call it so much fantasy. Okay. And uh, we also want a reference to the widget itself. So we do user widget. Self reference. There we go. So now what we can do is click on the button object. On clicked, we create the event. So on clicked button object, what we do is we call this uh, event dispatcher. Doing what? We pass the object data and a reference to self. Okay. So now from our uh, um, inventory UMG. What is going on is that in the moment someone is clicking over uh, any one of them, so what we need to do is, okay, when we add an object, we are creating a UMNG sub inventory object button widget. We are adding it as a child of the red box, and then we need to assign on button, on object clicked, which is the event dispatcher we created inside here. Okay, so. Now we just connect this, and this is the event which will be called once the uh, widget will be pressed. So if we do a quick print, like hello, we compile, we go here, we grab them, and we click, you can see hello, 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 hello. Great. So now we know which widget has been called, and we know which data is he holding. So what we can do is do spawn actor from class. Okay, I'm doing this, but it's already a really, really, really dirty way to make stuff. Usually you don't uh, spawn stuff from the widgets for a, a matter of uh, um, clean coding. You're going to have something which is responsible to do this stuff. But here we are just like explaining the, the basics of the inventory.
So I'm going to do like this. So I'm going to pick up object. So spawn actor will pick up object. We already have the object data, so we can pass the object data straight from the button to the actor. OK, then we need to spawn it somewhere. And let's say we want to spawn it in front of our uh, pawn. So we get get player pawn. We do get location and forward vector. Why forward vector? Because we want to know in which direction it's facing in order to be able to spawn it in front of it. So in order to spawn it in front of it, what we do is getting the location and we add to the location the forward vector multiplied for the amount of centimeters or units we want to be spawned in front of it. So we do something like 100 and we sum them. So now we have a, a vector, so a location, which is the actual location plus 100 centimeters in front of it. Boom. So there we go. So another thing we want to do is to be able to... Um, Okay, let's start like testing like this. We just pick them up and we can click on this, click on this, and click on this, and they are getting spawned. They exploded because they got spawned in the same position altogether. So it is working. And also we want to get the self-reference here and remove the widget from parent. Why? Because we don't want it, we don't want to, to keep having the object in our uh, inventory in the moment we drop it on the floor. Okay, so uh, a small thing we can still do just for, for simplicity, for, uh, for a cleaner uh, thing, we can do, we get to the pickup object and as we did before, we have the object scale, okay? We can remove the object scale and what we can do is go on our struct and add the scale Sorry. Object as a variable inside our struct. We are going to put as a default 050505. So, what is going to happen now is that inside our pickup object, we have our struct and we already have the scale here. So, there we go. So, if we move back to the inventor here, we can have the object with the scale and do something like two, the two, the two, or maybe three, let's do three. This one will be bigger. We do like eight, eight, eight. Oh, you are so good boy. And this one can be like this. There we go. So now we are also passing the size of them. So we're gonna pick them up, all of three, and when we spawn them, they will be of the same dimension we we set them when we created them because because we are why because we are storing the data about it and we are passing it back when we are spawning them. So now we have our uh, object. We can pick them up and we can put them back in the world. Oh, okay, this is so cool. Okay, I'll be closing with this high note. <laughs> I hope uh, everything has been uh, cool. You learn something. And if you need anything more, if you have some more question about it, you can just write me in the comments and I will make sure to answer to any one of you guys. So catch up the next time. If you have found any of this useful, make sure to smash the like button and to let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want more UE4 tutorial videos, hit subscribe and catch up the next time.